Having a personal website is an amazing way to showcase your experiences, research, and recent news. But as machine learning researchers and engineers, we don't really want to spend too much time on building and maintaining such a website and tinkering around with HTML and CSS. So let's look at how we can build and deploy a simple but cool looking personal academic website in really just a few minutes. So the first thing that we want to do is fork this repository. I'll leave a link in the description below to this repository and you can follow along. So again, you want to fork this repository. In my case, it won't work because I have already forked it. But in the end, after you have forked it, you will have a fork, I guess, and you will have to give it a name. Now this is important. You will want to give a name that is of this format, right? You will have enter your name, .github.io. You can really call it whatever you want, but this is important because this will be the URL to your website. Okay, so that's pretty much it. It's really important that you fork the repository, give it a name, and now let's deploy it in just a few clicks. So we again go to settings, and then we'll go down to the pages tab. And here you can see mine is already live running, but you can just do exactly what is done here. Just deploy it from a branch, the master branch, root, and then you'll hit save and you'll pretty much be done. The, the website is pretty much already up and running. You can see how it will be deployed by the actions here. Um, it really only takes one to perhaps three minutes and you'll be able to just open your website at this link. Now, in the beginning, it will look something like this because we haven't customized the website at all. This is just the boilerplate template website with how to get started and how to run it locally and stuff like that. But let's look at how we can customize this website and go from something like this to something like this. Okay, let's look at the elements that we have to work with here, right? We have this nice little navigation bar up above where we can jump to different tabs. Um, and then we have this nice little site author page where you have this little bar right here and you have the main uh, homepage, I would say, about the website. And really, there are different files that you want to touch and we'll go through it one step at a time. The first file that you want to touch is this underscore config file. This is like the index file with HTML, HTML websites. It's uh, for Jekyll to recognize how to render the file. It's really important, you need it, but it's again in the repository. So there's not much that we want to touch here. We pretty much only want to touch um, the title of our homepage, right? You will see that it now my, my website is called Boris's homepage. You can add a name and the, a name, but I really don't know what this actually does. Um, and what also is important is to actually enter the URL here. So if you don't do that, I believe if you then click on other tabs, it will redirect you to the tabs of the academicspages.github.io website. So that is important. But the rest here, I believe, doesn't do much. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, please. But what we want to touch now is down below with this site in this site author section here, right? This pretty much modifies the section right here, the left part. And you can already see it's quite intuitive. Um, it's the name here, corresponds to the name right here. Oops. Um, and then you can provide the image. Now, this image is stored in a directory called images. Who would have thought? Um, and you can see there are also a lot of other images that are from the template. Um, but you can see that I have already added my image here, profile pic 2. I have chosen this picture, which you might be familiar with if, if you know my channel. Um, but you know, I could use also some boring um, like passport image, but you know, that's boring. Um, again, entering your location, the employer, the email, all of that will be shown right here. Um, and then we get to the links of your social media accounts, right? Of Twitter, LinkedIn, GitHub, and YouTube. Again, nothing crazy. You just enter the username here. That's important because they will just append the username to the actual link, right? So you don't want to enter the whole link, github.com slash pseudoboris, right? But just the username. The same with LinkedIn, Twitter, and that's pretty much it for this side uh, section right here, which will um, always be uh, visible. Okay. 
Now let's go ahead and look at the navigation bar. As you can see, mine looks a bit different than the one of the original template. And again, it's really simple to modify it. You will go to this navigation.yaml file, which is located in the data directory. I don't know why it's located in the data directory, but you know, who cares? Um, yeah, so you see, it's just a nice little list of the elements for the navigation bar. And it's as simple as just removing the sections that you don't want to include in the navigation bar um, and just shifting around the order, right? I have my CV tab right here, my portfolio tab second, and then my, my publications tab. Now, what you can also see is that all of those tabs will be redirected to a specific um, file, right? Um, how this works is for the portfolio section, for example, you will have a directory for the portfolio elements and all of those portfolio elements will be markdown files. So in my case, I only have one portfolio element, but you can just add as many as you like and they will be listed just continuously, right? Really, really simple. Now, what I have done here is not referred to the CV um, markdown file, which is in the pages directory, right? You have here the CV markdown file, which would look something like this if you have just the, the original template code. Um, but what I have done is I really just refer to the PDF itself, which is located in the uh, files directory, right? And what this does is it really just opens up my CV in the browser inbuilt um, PDF reader, and it's as simple as that. If you want me to make a video on how to make a nice CV or how to build a proper CV, then let me know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to not miss that video. But you know, that's my CV and when I click on my name, it redirects me to my homepage, which is pretty nice. Now, um, what I've also done is I've went ahead and in the publications tab, I have one publication, which is well, again, one markdown file. But what you could also do is just directly refer to your Google Scholar account, which for example, my buddy Rob has done here in his homepage, right? If you go to his research tab, he's called research, not publications. It just instantly redirects him to, its, um, to his Google Scholar account. So little custom customizations that you can do to make it like you would wish your website to work. Okay, so that was pretty much it with the navigation tab. It's really simple to change what you want to include and what you don't want to include. You know, uh, you can also look at the documentation of the academics pages templates, but you know, basically it works like this, that you have different pre-existing templates for um, the little pages that you want to have, and they will have their individual directories, right? You have your talks section that I don't have because I haven't had any talks, but and those would, will again be markdown files in this talks directory. And like, and that's pretty much it. Okay, let's jump ahead and look at how I designed my nice little um, homepage. So the homepage is in this about.markdowns files. You can see it is in the pages directory. Um, and it's really just a simple markdown file. It's really as easy as that. You know, it has, it has specific template elements um, that you have to provide, right? It has a title, which you can specify here, and the title will then be printed as a nice little heading here. And that's pretty much the only interesting thing. And from there on, again, it's just a normal markdown syntax. Um, you can add emojis as much as you like directly into the file. I think emojis make the whole site look better. Um, I added a nice little image that is custom to my website because, you know, if you have read a tiny bit about what I'm interested in, it's about vision and language, right? Multimodal learning. And you have this little robot or AI that looks at the image and talks about what it sees, right? It's, it's pretty nice. Um, about this specific image, they say nice little bonus tip, I guess. I just went ahead and uh, just entered a, this little prompt here into Dali. It generated me this image. I took the image, hopped into Photoshop, did the little modifications that you can see right here. And that's that. I think it's a really nice personal touch. I really recommend it. 
Um, and it's really easy with the power of AI. Okay, so yeah, I won't go into a syntax of, of um, markdown files. The only interesting thing is that if you um, embed a image, you can then stylize this image a bit by entering something into brackets after the image, right? I have a align right tag so that it is aligned to the right. And then I specify the width of the image um, and it will automatically format it that the image is to the right and the text will then automatically be to the left, as you can see in the website here, in this homepage. So I already talked about the CV. Again, it's just a reference to the PDF. And then you can go to the portfolio tab, for example. This is how the portfolio tab would look like. Again, you just have the directory with the portfolio uh, markdown files. They will automatically be listed here. And those have a specific syntax as well, right? Um, you have a title that will be displayed right here. Uh, you have then a little description, which you can also, uh, where you can also add a image that you can see here. Again, this image is created using Dali. And it's just a little, again, robot AI with safety count because reward constraint policy optimization is a safe reinforcement learning technique. I'm talking way too much, um, but you know, that's it. Um, and if you actually click on the title, you will then get redirected to the actual content of the markdown file. You know, I would recommend you to be a bit more illustrative and descriptive about the project, show what you have done, show your results. I specifically didn't do that in my case here because I already have a blog post about this uh, work, which is already very descriptive, very visual and very um, detailed. Um, but yeah, that's up to you how you want to design it. Again, it just looks really pretty. It's again, very simple. Just write markdown files. The image is again in the images directory. Um, and that's that. Finally, in my case, I have the um, publications tab where I have one publication, which is again a markdown file. Now, again, you have specific um, keys that you can uh, provide a value to. Um, where you have this link right here. You have the description, which will be shown in the tab of all and listing of all publications. And once you actually click on the on this element, you will then get to the actual markdown file content. In my case, I just added the um, the abstract of the paper in for for like both cases, the actual um, post I would say about the publication and the, the description of the publication in the list of multiple publications. I only have one here, so that will, if you have multiple, you can just show list them down below or again, just refer to your um, Google Scholar page. So yeah, I mean, it's actually pretty much all there is to this template, right? It's, that's the website. That is how I customize it, the important parts that you should touch and know about. And you can really set up this whole website in literally only a few minutes. It's about how efficiently you can write your text, um, customize it, add in images. In my case, again, it's more about showcasing my experience because I don't have that much research where I can just add the list of all my publications or I don't have that many like news or talks that I can, that I would um, list on my homepage, right? With recent news and a Twitter embedding. There's really a lot that you can do to be a bit more extra on your website, but really fundamentally your static web, your dynamic website actually with a lot of links and CV and portfolio elements is really, really easy to do. No, no, no HTML no crazy CSS styling, really just a few markdown files, and that's pretty much it. Oh, and of course, to deploy it, it's really just, again, adding the files that you have changed, committing it, pushing it to GitHub, and it will automatically trigger um, a one of the actions here. It will again take one, two, perhaps three minutes to build it, and your changes are live on your website and you don't have to do anything further. And that was pretty much it. If I went too fast, I'm really sorry, but just rewatch the video as often as you like and pause at the timestamps where you just want to follow along a bit more. And what did we really do? 
we honestly just forked this one repository, set up GitHub pages by doing three clicks, and then customized our website by modifying two YAML files and then just adding markdown files. That's not much for a website. You know, as machine learning researchers or engineers, this website is perfect. It showcases our research, it showcases our experiences and our personal projects. And by the way, if you want some help with building a personal project, this video here is for you. Well, that's it. Bye.